This sermon is titled The Power of the Gospel. Be enriched as you listen. This morning I just want to remind us of a very simple thing and yet something very important for all of us. And I think um, because of what we've been through globally uh, over, over a two-year period through the pandemic, we were all locked at home and didn't have too much of interaction outside. And then coming out of the pandemic, especially here in our country, there were, you know, in so many parts of our country, there are anti-conversion laws and things that uh, sometimes seem to put a wet blanket upon our zeal and our fervor to share the gospel. And uh, so I, I felt it, uh, you know, I just felt, and I realized it for myself personally, and also for us as a church community, that we need to rekindle our passion to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? I know things around us are a little different, but that's okay. We still need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we just need to use a little bit of wisdom on how we go about doing it. But the gospel still has to go out. Amen? We can't go to heaven and say, Lord, last 25 years of my life, I never did anything because there were anti-conversion laws or something like that. That's not an excuse. right? We have to get the gospel out. And so this morning, uh, our intent is very simple. It's just to rekindle our passion, to just share the gospel of Jesus, to tell others about Jesus, and uh, to just you know, bring, bring that upon our hearts once again. So we're going to start off with, of course, the Great Commission as given to us in the Gospel of Mark, Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 20. Uh, now we have the Great Commission recorded for us, and you know, and all, you could look at it in all the four Gospels. So that it's there towards the end of each Gospel in some form, where Jesus is commissioning his disciples to go and take the Gospel out to the nations. And so in Mark 16, verses 15 through 20, it's good to read it. Please follow with me. And he said, this is post his resurrection, before his ascension. Jesus said, go, let's read it out loud together, please. Go, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Now remember back many, many years ago as a, in school, uh, there was so much of zeal that, that filled me to share the gospel. I thought Jesus is coming tomorrow. I have only today to save the world. <laughs> that was, that really, you know, that was the unexpressed a fire that was burning inside me. There was like fire in my bones. And so uh, uh, in those days, I did all kinds of crazy things. I stood up in my classroom, just preached to the class and stood up in the chapel and preached to the chapel. I covered many areas of Bangalore on my cycle with my bag full of tracks. I will start, go to every house and drop tracks in every home. Uh, covered many areas in Bangalore City, dropping New Testaments in post boxes, you know. Uh, that was the zeal with, that I was consumed with. I would st- stand on the corner of MG Road, talk to anybody, just tell them about Jesus. You need Jesus. Now, that was the zeal that gripped my heart. And even in the early days of APC, when we started APC, Christmas time, we would go up and down. And some of you may remember this. We used to go almost every year up and down uh, MG Road, you know, singing carols and going into those uh, all the commercial buildings on MG Road, nobody didn't ask any permission, just went in singing carols, giving out tracts, and, and all kinds of things. And so those early years, were, we were so out, go, I mean, going out, sharing the gospel, and so on. Um, nothing could stop us 
you know, we did that. I remember when, whenever there was a concert happening on palace grounds, we'll be there like at 11 o'clock at night. I remember there was this concert uh, called The Rock. I mean, uh, some rock concert. I don't know what the concert. Now, we immediately printed a track called The Rock. <laughs> Yeah. And inside that was a message about Jesus. And we were waiting at 11 o'clock at night after the concert. All these guys coming out. Drunk, smoked, stoned, everything. You know, they didn't know what was happening. Say, hey, the rock, the rock, the rock. I said, what is it, the rock? You know, all of them took the tracks, took it home. You know? Now, so we did all those kinds of things in those, those early years, you know. But then, of course, uh, the environment, things around us changed. Restrictions began to come in. Uh, it was a little bit more uh, difficult right here in our city to just go out on the streets and do these kinds of things. Um, people began to retaliate and all those kinds of things. So I understand that things have changed, but we can still do what Jesus commanded us to do. What did he want us to do? He said, go into the whole world and preach this gospel to every person. So I want every person to hear this gospel. Right? Now, if you look at missions and look at what, you know, people studying missions, so you can go online to Joshua Project and give, they keep a track of, you know, where the gospel is going. Uh, so if you go to uh, Joshua Project, I think it's .org, you can see there are about 7,000 some people groups that are still yet to hear the gospel. So when Jesus said, make disciples of all nations, that word nations in the Greek is ethne or ethnic groups. So it's not just nations as in ge geographical nations, but it's talking about ethnic groups. And so there's a count of how many more ethnic groups that are still waiting to hear the gospel or receive the gospel. And they have a count of it and they're getting close to fulfilling that. That, that great commission in that sense of getting the gospel to every ethnic group. But the fact and the reality is there are people all around us. You don't have to go looking in some strange part of the world. There are people all around us in your workplace, in your school, in your college, uh, people around you who probably have not heard the gospel. They're very close, meaning they drive by the church buildings they, there are Christian books, there's all kinds of things around, but they've never really heard the gospel. Nobody's really told them, this is the gospel. And that's why you and I have a very important part to play in bringing the gospel to people. And as we observe trends, about 50% of the world's population, 50 above, more than 50% of the world's population, are living in urban centers. So urban centers are now the new mission field. I'm not saying we shouldn't go out to the remote places, but we must be very aware that people are come moving into the urban centers, of course. So are the urban centers are our new mission fields. Are you with me? And you and I are already missionaries placed right here. People are around us. The mission field is around us. And we need to bring the gospel to people around us. Now, of course, we have to do it intelligently, do it with wisdom. Jesus, when he sent his disciples, he told them, look, I'm sending you as sheep among wolves. So what do you do? Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Yes, you've got to be harmless. You're not going in there uh, in, with violence. But here's how you deal with the wolves. He says, be wise. Be wise. And that's something we can all uh, seek God for. How can I, with wisdom, in my context, bring the gospel to every creature? The other, every person. The other thing I just want to highlight there, here in Mark 16, is that Jesus said, when you take the gospel, expect the supernatural. He said, in my name, cast out demons, heal the sick, and, and, and do these supernatural things as giving attestation to the message. Giving evidence to the message. So when you are bringing the message of Jesus, we open. Pray for any supernatural thing that can take place in the lives of people that you're ministering to. Uh, whether they need healing, whether they need some miracle, just pray for them. And let them have evidence that what you're sharing is true. And verse 20 is so powerful. What did the early disciples do? It says, they went... 
everywhere, preaching the gospel or preaching the message. And what, what, what else do we see? And the Lord was working with them. So when you and I are sharing the gospel, the Lord is working with you. You're not doing this on your own. Oh God, I got to convince this person to believe in Jesus. No, no, you're sharing the gospel. The Lord is working with you. And he will confirm the word with signs following. So we have that same expectation today. Lord, when I bring the gospel, when I share Jesus with people, you are working with me and you will confirm the message I'm giving them with your works. You will do it. Amen? So, I want, us to, I want to encourage us this day to carry the gospel. Now, one of the important things you must understand is what is the gospel? What is the message I'm supposed to tell people? And also that you and I can have confidence in this message that we are giving to people or we're bringing to people. You see, the gospel is, simply means good news. And it is centered around what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. The gospel is not come to church. It's good to invite people to church, but that's not the gospel. The gospel is not read this tract. It's good to get people to read the tract, but that itself is not the gospel. The gospel is not, you know, uh, come to you know, some event. That's a good thing to invite people to the event. But what is the gospel? The gospel is that Jesus Christ died for our sins. That he was perfect. That he rose up again the third day. And anyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness for their sins. That's the message. Are you with me? So we need to communicate. We need to share that core message. That Jesus died for your sins. He was buried. He rose up again. He's alive today. And if you believe in him, your sins will be forgiven. And you'll be brought out of darkness. You'll be brought into the kingdom of God. That message must be communicated. And of course, uh, there's a, 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 a prelude to it. That means we tell them why they need to have their sins. Why we need to have our sins forgiven. Why did Jesus need to die on the cross? We tell us. That we're all sinners. We all needed a savior. And that's what Jesus came to do. So that's the gospel that we are supposed to communicate to people. Are you all with me? Now, this message sounds absurd in a modern day and age. So what nonsense you're talking. Somebody died on the cross 2,000 years ago. And you're telling me. That if I believe in him, my sins will be forgiven. You know, so to the, to the people in the world, this sounds foolishness and sad to say sometimes we Christians are also embarrassed to share the gospel. So we like to do other things. Come to church, Jesus will make you rich. Come to church, you'll get a lot of money. Come to church, you will, you know. So we, we, we want to present other alternatives instead of presenting the gospel. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So we need to gain confidence in this message of the gospel. That Jesus Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose up again. He's alive today. And if you believe in Jesus, your life will be saved. You will be saved. Your life will be changed and transformed. That's the message we are supposed to bring to people. Now, I want us to read this passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I know I've shared this earlier many times in the past, but it's good to revisit these things. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 18 to 31. Listen to what the, Paul, the apostle Paul is writing. He's talking about the gospel. And he's saying, verse 18, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The message of the cross, the message that Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross. He was buried, he rose up again, he's alive today. That message sounds foolishness to the world. Of course, he recognizes that. Even Paul, 2,000 years ago, recognized that. It sounds foolishness. 
But to those of us who are being saved, that message is the power of God. It's through the cross that is life changing, life transforming, redeeming, bondage breaking, delivering power that comes to our lives. They may think it's foolishness, but you and I need to know that this message is the vehicle through which the power of God actually comes into our lives. And he continues, verse 19. He says, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? In other words, he's saying, you know what? Don't be afraid of the challenges that come to us from all the questions that are put against us. Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? That means the people who are challenging the Christian faith, the people who are challenging what we believe, the people who are challenging the message we are preaching. They are saying, this is foolishness. This is ridiculous. Just don't be worried. God has brought them to nothing. In other words, it's not your problem or my problem to try and convince them. Don't worry about those people. Don't worry about the arguments they present. Don't worry about the atheists and the agnostic and, and the people who challenge the things we say. Or even the scientists who, who pretend to know everything. Actually, they don't. So where is the scribe? Where is the wise? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? God will take care of them. You don't worry about it. What must we do? Verse 21. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom didn't know God. That means the world through its own understanding is not going to come to understand this great, mighty, all, almighty God. It's not going to come. But what has God done? It says there in verse 21. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who who believe. So this is what God is pleased in. God is saying, this may look foolish, but this is what I've chosen to do. That through the foolishness of the message preached, the message communicated, the message shared, through that foolish thing that you and I may do, I'm going to save people. So when you are sharing the message, it may look foolish, but I want you to understand God is happy about it. Are you understand? When you talk to somebody and you say, Hey, I want to tell you that Jesus Christ loves you. That Jesus died for you on the cross. And you give them the message of the cross. It may sound foolish. You may be embarrassed. But the Bible says it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached. To save people. You don't know that when you are doing that simple thing, that seemingly foolish thing of, of sharing the message that God is setting up somebody to be saved. Are you understanding? It pleased God. God was pleased. That through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. Verse 22. For the Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. What is Paul telling us in verses 22 to 24? He's saying, you know, I recognize there are two kinds of people out there. There are the Jews. They are very spiritual people. And they seek a sign. They seek something supernatural. They are looking for something spectacular. They are looking for phenomena. They are saying, show us something powerful. The Jews are looking for a sign. The Greeks are the intellectuals. 
They are looking for something very stimulating that stimulates their mind, that supposedly answers their questions. They are seeking for wisdom. They will argue, they will debate, they will ask questions, they will challenge what we are saying. There are Jews and there are Greeks. They are the deeply spiritual people who are looking for something supernatural. And there are these greatly intellectual people who are looking for something very, that stimulates their mind and their thinking. But he says, but we preach what? But we preach. Christ crucified. We've got only one message. You're a Jew or you're a Greek. We have only one message. It's the message of the cross. You're a Jew. Man, I'll give you the message. You want something supernatural? It's in this message. You're a Greek. You want something that will answer all your questions? It's in this message. The Jews seek a sign. The Greeks seek after, mess, after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. That's it. We give them the same message. We tell them Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried. He rose up again the third day. And if you believe in Jesus, you will be saved. You will be healed. You will be delivered. You will be forgiven. This is God's answer to every question you have. This is the message. And then he says this. He says, you know, to some, it's a stumbling block. To others, it's foolishness. Because when the Jews look at, he listen to this message, it's like, what is this? Where is the power? The Greeks are looking for wisdom. And so they think it's foolishness. But he says, verse 24, Christ, is the power of God and the wisdom of God. In other words, you don't worry about this. You just give the message. Some may consider it foolishness. Some may stumble at it. They will laugh at it. But for those who receive the message, they are going to encounter Jesus Christ. He is the wisdom of God. And he is the power of God. Somehow, every question they have will be answered in Christ. Because he is the wisdom of God. Somehow, every need they have, every supernatural thing they are looking for, will be met in this person of Jesus Christ. Because he is the power of God. Are you listening? So the burden is not on you. All you and I have to do is share this simple message. We understand that some may consider it foolishness and some may laugh at it. They may stumble at it. But there are those who are going to encounter the Christ on the cross. They're going to encounter this Jesus and they will find in this Jesus both the wisdom of God and the power of God. Amen. Amen. They will find it. So you and I, we don't have to strive. We don't have to sugarcoat the gospel. We don't have to put a lot of icing around the gospel. <laughs> Just present the gospel. We preach Christ crucified. Just present it. And people will encounter Christ. And then he continues. He says, you know, the verse 25. The foolishness of God is wiser than man. And the weakness of God is stronger than man. In other words, he's saying, look, hey, just relax. Just relax. Don't take it on yourself to try and answer the disputer of this age and the arguer of this age and all the intellectual. Don't take it upon yourself to try to produce signs and miracles. Don't worry. God's weakness is greater than the greatest strength man can have. God's foolishness is greater than the wisest person on the earth. So let God handle this. Our job is to be the messenger. Share the gospel. That Christ died, was buried, he rose up again. And he's inviting you to believe in him. Share that. Then some of us will say, but pastor, you don't know. I am not very eloquent. 
I am not some big person. I am not the CEO of a company. I am not the managing director. I am not the vice president. I am nobody. You mean I can share the gospel? I failed my Hindi. I failed all my exams. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just trying to exaggerate. The point is this. You know, many times we look at ourselves and we feel we are unfit. We are not worthy carriers of this message. Look at me. I haven't accomplished anything. And I, I, we feel I, nobody's going to listen to me. I'm not fit to bring this gospel. Listen. It's not about you. We are just messengers. Ordinary messengers. And that's okay. Because what does Paul say? He addresses that issue that we all struggle with. He says this. Verse 26. For you see your calling, brethren. He says, guys, look at, look at, look at all whom God has called. You see your calling, brethren. That not many wise according to the flesh. And not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, but of him you are in Jesus Christ, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. What is Paul saying? He says, look, look around you. Not many wise, not many noble, not many mighty you know, you don't see those kinds of people. Now, of course, God chooses them. But the majority of us are like this. We are foolish. We are base, meaning we are just the, the, the very bottom, you know, forgive me for using the word, the scum, the dirt. <laughs> we are despised, rejected. Nothing. But God has chosen all of them. This. And through them. He is displaying his glory. Amen. In other words, don't worry about you. Don't worry about yourself. You may feel, God, I'm foolish. I'm nothing. I, I don't have anything. But God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound things that are mighty. He has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound things that are wise. He's chosen the base things of the world to confound the things that may be considered rich and powerful. He's even, you take nothing and he confounds those who are something. So that's how God works. So we all qualify. Hallelujah. You're already qualified to be a carrier of this gospel. You already qualify to be a messenger of the cross. You already qualify. And then Paul says, you know what? Also understand that God, verse 31, verse 30, God has brought us into Christ. And he's made Christ to be to us everything we need. In other words, our sufficiency is in Christ. In ourselves, we are nothing. We feel weak, foolish, uh, and so on. But he's put us in Christ. And Christ is our sufficiency. Christ is our completeness. Christ is our wisdom. He's our sanctification. He's our redemption. He's everything we need. God's put us there. So operate from that as you bring the message of the cross. Amen. So, wherever you are, you and I, we need to rekindle our desire. Now, I know, you know, we've had gone through the lock. As I said earlier, we've gone through lockdown. And, you know, it may, it may have been a long time since we even spoke to somebody about Jesus. But let's revive that again. Let's bring it back. 
Let's be intentional. Let's look at ways by which we can share the simple message of Jesus with people. Be wise when we do it. I'll bring our attention to a few more scriptures before we close. Romans 1.16, the Apostle Paul said, let's read it out loud and strong together. Let's read it. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Let's say that first part one more time. Let's read it. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. So don't be ashamed of the gospel. It's a simple message. We know some may think we are foolish and some may laugh at us. We know it. But this message is the power of God. It is the wisdom of God. For those who believe, they will encounter Christ who is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Their questions will be answered and their needs will be met in the person of Jesus Christ. We just have to bring the gospel to them. Amen? So, some practical things. How do we do it? Jesus said this, and we are very familiar with this, and this is and our vision as a church is based on this passage in Matthew 5, verses 13 through 16. Let's read it out together, please. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So he said, you are the salt. You are the light. Our vision is to be salt and light. So you are the salt. You bring the flavors of God or the influence of God. You permeate your environment. You are the light. Light's a little forceful. You penetrate. You dispel darkness. So you and I, we are salt and light in the earth. Wherever God has placed you, you may be a school teacher. Be a salty school teacher. <laughs> and be a bright school teacher. You may be, you know, a professional. Be a salty professional. Be a bright professional. You are salt and you are light. But how are you going so salt permeates, light penetrates? There is that slow, gradual influence. And there is that powerful impact that happens. Both dynamics are involved. But how do we bring it in? He said in verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. So that's the part. How are people going to experience your saltiness and your brightness? How are they going to experience the flavor and the influence you and I are bringing in to our spheres? Let them see your works. So the works, what we do, is the channel through which we are going to bring that saltiness, the flavor of God and the light of God. That's how we're going to bring it in to our environment, to where God has placed us. What are you doing? So your work, other things you do, the things you engage in, there are means through which you are being salt and light where God has placed you. Are you with me? So he says, let them see your good works. So they see your good works. They are feeling the saltiness. They're experiencing the brightness through what you're doing. And then you bring the message. The message points them to 
Jesus. You share the message. It's because of Jesus. Jesus is at work in me. Jesus is my savior. And he can be your savior too. He died for me on the cross. He died for you on the cross. So your works precede your message. Your works show your saltiness and your brightness. And your message then points people to Jesus. Otherwise they won't know. They won't know. So we do works. We do our stuff. We do it well. And then your works become a platform for you to bring the message. Are you understand? They see your good works. Let them see whatever, you know, whatever each one of us are doing different things. You may be an athlete. Be a good athlete. You may be a film star. I don't have any film stars are sitting here. Namaste. You know. <laughs> but... <laughs> You may be a film star, but be a good one. You know, you may be a newscaster. Be a good newscaster. Speak the truth. We need some of them, you know. So whatever you do, through your works, through your works, be salt, be light, then your works become a platform for the message. Simple gospel. Jesus died for you and me. If we believe in him, we will be saved. Simple gospel. Let them see your good works and glorify your father. Worship him, please come. Last passage I want us to read because this really puts on our heart the importance of sharing the gospel. Romans 10, verses 13 to 17. Paul writes here, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, whoever. Doesn't matter what background, doesn't matter what social status, doesn't matter. It says whoever, anybody. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Saved. They will experience the saving, healing, delivering, liberating, life-changing power of Jesus Christ. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we can do this, or we can share this with anyone. Don't hold back. But then this is the issue. Verse 14. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher or a messenger or somebody who shares it with them? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who has believed our report, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So before they can call on the Lord, they need to believe. But in order to believe, they need to hear. And in order to hear, somebody has to tell them. In order to somebody to tell them, they need to be sent. But the Lord has already sent us. And you're being, we are being resent this morning. <laughs> reminded to go and share the gospel. And we know. That not everybody is going to receive this. As I already said, Lord, who has believed our report? We know that. Not everybody is going to receive it. It's okay. But we also know the importance of sharing because faith comes by hearing. So they need to hear. They need to hear. So we go and tell. We know that not everyone is going to receive it. We understand that. But we also know they need to hear because only when they hear can they believe. And only when they believe can they call. And whoever calls shall be saved. So we still share. You may face some rejections. You may face some I'm not interested. You may face all kinds of things. Okay, we know not everybody's going to receive it. But we still share. 
because we understand that when they hear it gives them an opportunity to believe and if they believe they can call and when they call they will experience Jesus Christ amen so this morning I'm praying that asking God that for all of us starting with me for all of us we'll rekindle that passion to serve Jesus Christ to share Jesus with people that as opportunities come our way we'll point people to Jesus be good in your work whatever you're doing be good in your work because that's your platform that's what helps point people to Jesus and then share the message tell people we're not forcing anybody the nice thing about being in the, ur- in, in the urban city is people think. So you can't force anybody. Say, hey, you, you think about it. You, you make your decision. I'm not making it for you. I'm just sharing some news, good news. You make your choice. I'm not forcing it. So we are free to share. This past week, our Bible college students they got permission from the police and they were outside Krishna Jayanti College distributing our books, you know, just engaging with students in conversation. And they gave out over 300 some books. So they were wise about it. They went and got permission from the police. Police said, yeah, go ahead. Those kids really need it, I think. <laughs> we can't do anything about them, so at least you guys do something. I don't know, I'm just making that part up. But the police were more than happy. Yeah, go ahead. Keep your desk, keep your table there. Give it out, reach out. So they went, they were there. So we can do it. You just have to be wise. Ask God for wisdom. Each one in our own context. And share Jesus. Let's rise to our feet, please. I want you just to encourage you, those of you who are watching this, wherever you are, whatever your context is, we're all in different places, doing different things, engaging in different activities. Some of us may be students, some of us may be professionals, some of us may be homemakers, doing different things. But we can all ask God to give us opportunities to touch lives. He commissioned us to do this. God help us do this. To touch people. To share the gospel with people. Pray for them. And we know that as we take the word, the Lord works with us and He confirms the message with supernatural signs and wonders. We can freely pray for people. Pray for them to experience healing or deliverance or miracle or Whatever their need is, pray freely in the name of Jesus. And let God do it. The message is very simple, like we said. Some may think it's foolishness and some may stumble at it. But to those who encounter the Christ, they discover both the power of God and the wisdom of God. And so, Father, this morning, by the power of your word and by the power of your Holy Spirit, kindle afresh in each of us the fire, the passion to share Jesus. Like the Apostle Paul maybe say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Father, remove all fear, remove all hesitation, remove all intimidation. Let those things be taken out of our thinking. Make us bold, make us fearless, make us wise to bring the gospel to every person, God, that we could reach each one of us. And we know that you're working with us. 
as we bring the gospel. You're working with us. Let your anointing, let the Holy Spirit empower each of us, Father. Let the Holy Spirit fill us with boldness, knowing that He makes us witnesses for Jesus Christ, wherever we are. Let the Holy Spirit stir us up. Thank you, God. Thank you. going to take a few moments to worship and then I'll come back and pray for our needs. If you've come here this morning expecting God to touch you, to heal, to deliver, as we worship the next few moments, as we pray, expect God to work a miracle. Those of you watching online, wherever you are, as we take the next few moments to worship Jesus and look to Jesus, remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he taught us. He said, in my name, you cast out devils. In my name, you lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. In my name, signs and miracles will take place. Signs and wonders will take place. So, let's worship Jesus. Let's look to Him. and We're going to pray together. Found in your hands, fullness of joy. Every fear suddenly wiped away. Here in your presence, all my gifts now fade away. Every crown no longer on display. Here in your presence. Yeah.
Father, even now in your presence right here. And in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let people receive healing. For conditions and problems in their body, in their mind. Let people receive their healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Because here in your presence, that heaven and earth become one. In the name of Jesus, we command sicknesses, diseases, ailments to be healed. We command bodies and minds to be healed in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of sickness and disease, in the name of Jesus, we command you to leave. Let there be healing right now. The bones that have been injured, let there be healing right now. Back problems, let there be healing right now. Vertebrae and damaged discs, let there be healing right now in the name of Jesus. Eye conditions, eye problems that have been there for a long time, let there be healing right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, our healer, our deliverer. Things that torment people at night, disturbing sleep and harassing, tormenting, oppressing in the night seasons, you foul works of darkness, we break you off of the lives of people. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Father, we thank you for your healing. For your deliverance. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your healing, God. Thank you, God. And Lord, let there be healing even for speech problems. People who have problems with their speech. Sometimes you're stammering, your words are not coming, you're not able to articulate well. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. Receive your healing. Speak fluently. Speak well. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We honor you, Jesus. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your power, God. And God, we take authority over terminal conditions where doctors have given up hope and doctors say nothing can be done. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let life, let resurrection, life be administered. Just bear the names of people that you know who might be in these situations. Let resurrection, life, Jesus is the resurrection. He is the life. And in his name, we command healing. We command people to live and not die. We command organs that, that may have been affected with terminal conditions to be revived and supernaturally healed in the name of Jesus. Let there be a complete turnaround. Let doctors see a turnaround. Let them see organs being revived, made whole, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, God. We bless your name. We praise you, God. And Father, we just pray that as we go out into this world, that you'll set up opportunities for each of us, God, to share Jesus with people. To share the message of Jesus. That we'll be bold and unashamed. And that we will pray. And expect supernatural things. As the Lord commissioned us to do. And may we turn our world upside down. And right side up Lord. May we influence. And impact. May we be salt and light. Wherever we go. Thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit 
Be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.